Okay, lesson 8.1, we will be graphing f of x is equal to ax squared. So the big idea here is identifying the characteristics of quadratic functions. A quadratic function is a nonlinear function that can be written in the standard form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to 0. The u-shaped graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. And in this lesson, we will graph quadratic functions where b and c are both equal to 0. Our core concept are, is mainly to start looking at the characteristics of the quadratic function. So the parent function is f of x is equal to x squared. The graphs of all other quadratic functions are transformations of the graph of the parent quadratic function. So if by transformations, we are thinking um, in the coordinate plane, we have translations, uh, possibly rotations, um, reflections, and even dilations. So the lowest point on a parabola that opens up or the highest point on a parabola that opens down is called the vertex. And in this drawing, you can see the vertex of the parent graph is the origin, 0, 0. The vertical line that divides the parabola, parabola into two symmetric parts is called the axis of symmetry. So it's always going to be, we talked about this, a vertical line. Um, and in this case, it is x is equal to 0. It is also the y-axis. Um, so it's the line that passes through the vertex. Um, when we start talking about some different things going on and we want to describe the graph, you can see on the left how it shows the arrow going down and decreasing um, for y. The values of y are decreasing when a, or sorry, when x is less than zero. As x increases, y will be decreasing. Okay, so when when we're on the left-hand side of the origin like this, and our values of x always increase left to right, right? So the closer we get to the origin as we're approaching the vertex, y, the y values are decreasing. When x is greater than zero, as x increases, y also increases. So the first example out of your book is just that. We're going to consider the graph. We're going to use the graph to identify some characteristics, such as the vertex, axis of symmetry, and the behavior. So this is the uh, one in your book as example one. We can describe the domain and the range. Um, but you can see on the picture of the graph, it shows the vertex as negative 1, comma, negative 2. And then the line or axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 1. That's the vertical line. Um, the domain would be for all the input values are all the real numbers, okay? And then in our range, we're limited to real numbers um, that are greater than or equal to this negative 2. So y would be greater than or equal to the negative 2. Um, to describe the behavior, when x is less than the negative 1, so less than the vertex as it's approaching the vertex, um, it says that um, when x decreases, now think of the wording here, you know, when x, so we're talking on the, the left-hand side of negative 1 here, as x decreases, what's happening to this red line? It's increasing. Even though the function itself is decreasing, right? So you have two ways to say this. Um, you could say that as x increases, um, y decreases, okay? So don't be confused by the wording here that says y increases as x decreases because it does, right? And this arrow that I drew right here is showing you x decreasing, and then y increases doing that. So when x is greater than the negative 1, we're on the right-hand side. When x increases, okay, y, shown by the blue side of the parabola, is increasing as well. And that's how we can describe that. So let's try one on our own.
here is a parabola that opens down. We can start by identifying the vertex right here. Okay, so the vertex is equal to negative 3 comma 7. We have our axis of symmetry as described by x is equal to negative 3. And now when we're talking about when x is less than negative 3, okay, so now let's look at what's happening on the left-hand side of negative 3. As x increases, right, so does our value of y. So as x increases, y increases, and this is just one way to describe it, right? When x is greater than negative 3, now we're on this hand, this side, right? As x increases, y is decreasing, or y decreases. Okay. In our next core concept, we're going to look at what happens when we have a factor of a other than 1, okay? Um, when, you know, so a is being multiplied to x squared. So when a is greater than 0 um, and we have it between 0 and 1, you see the red parabola right here. Okay, and you can see that it's much wider than the parent fac uh, function. The parent function is when a is equal to 1. That's the parent function. f of x is equal to x squared. So when it is um, wider, we call this a vertical shrink. Okay, a vertical shrink. Now think about instances when a is between 0 and 1. We're talking about a fraction, okay? So think of in your dilations, when your scale factor was a fraction, it was, you know, it, it, it was a reduction or it was a, it dilated and, you know, got smaller. So it was a shrink. That's how you can hopefully remember that. Um, and then in, when X, it, or sorry, when the value of A is greater than 1, you see the green um, right here, the green parabola is like, taller and skinnier. I don't know if you can call it taller, but, you know, it's a vertical stretch, okay, so it's kind of like pulling it vertically up, and if it's greater than one, um, think of it as, you know, those were the enlargements, so I guess maybe a stretch seems like it's getting bigger that way. Okay, when we are looking at when a is less than zero, now we're talking the negative side of it. Look at how all of the parabolas to the right, right here, are all opening down. So when a is equal to a negative 1, that is literally a reflection. Ooh, this is a very terrible uh, parent uh, parabola. <laughs> so that's a very um, horribly out of scale, terrible parent function. But um, the negative 1 is a reflection of the f of x is equal to x squared. All right. So if uh, a is between negative 1 and 0, okay, so now we have a fraction, a negative fraction, we will still call this a vertical shrink, and that is given um, right over here by the red parabola, and we can see that it gets wider. It will also be described compared to our parent function, which is still this one up at the top in blue, as a reflection. So it is a reflection of the parent function. When a is less than negative 1, Okay, it is now a, um, the absolute value, so to speak, is getting farther and farther away from zero. Um, then that is going to be a vertical stretch and um, a reflection also in the x-axis of the parent function. So we get a chance to now um, graph some of these and then compare them to the original. So if you're going to graph g of x is equal to 2x squared, then you'll compare it. The first thing you'll do is make a table of values, 
plot the ordered pairs, draw a smooth, smooth curve. To compare it, you could say that both functions open up. So notice on our graph, our g of x is in blue and our parent function is in black. Um, because it falls on the inside, we know that that is a uh, vertical uh, stretch by a factor of 2 of the parent graph. They do have the same axis of symmetry. They do have the same vertex as well. So those are all ways to describe it. So we get to do our own. So in this case, we want to start by making a table of values. So you can use pretty much whatever you want for these. Um, I just like to do more than just two or three because it makes it a little easier if you're connecting more than just, you know, two dots. And so I'll just do like say negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And by evaluating when x is equal to negative two, I will take four times five, which is twenty. Um, one times five, this is obviously zero. So I will graph um, the origin. Um, if I count by fives. Um, and I go and I'll, I'll use the x axis by ones and the y axis by fives. Um, I would do negative two and then five, ten, fifteen, twenty would be up here. Um, we already did the zero, zero, negative one, five would be there. One, five would be here and two, twenty would be here. We could then draw a smooth curve to connect. the dots and of course try to make it go all the way through the actual vertex. Alright, so in doing so then I could compare it to the parent function and the parent function um, would be, let me change the colors here, remember the parent function is going to be um, 1 comma 1, right? So the parent function is going to fall on the outside here which means that our um, g of x is a vertical stretch when I compare it, a vertical stretch by a factor of 5 when compared to the parent function. And another example for making our table, we would have x and g of x. If I start with, uh, let's see, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4, I would have, um, in this case, you know, so negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, and divide that by negative 4, I get negative 4. Um, 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. So I will graph this. So my origin is the vertex. Um, negative 4, negative 4, negative 2, negative 1, 2, 1, and 4, negative 4. So that when I draw my smooth curve, I'll try to see how well I can do on this one if I can hit the origin. Not bad. Okay, good. Um, compared to the parent function, right, and you can always, you know, kind of draw your parent function a little bit. It's right up here. Okay, so compared to my um, parent function, it's going to be wider. It's wider than the parent function, so then I know it's going to be a vertical shrink by a factor of one-fourth. And it is also a reflection, because it is opening down and the parent function opens up, in the x-axis. And that's how I would compare it to the parent function.